Hi, I'm Anhat Singh. Hi, I'm Ekam Singh. Our project is under the sub-theme of mathematical modeling and its title is Astronomical Computers Stereographically Projected Heavens. Today in our model, we will be demonstrating an astronomical computer which was invented by the Greeks in the 1st or 2nd century BC. This astronomical computer is known as the astrolabe which means star taker. An astrolabe is both a map of the heavens and it is also a portable computer used to solve astronomical problems. Frankly speaking, the astrolabe is the world's first astronomical computer. The fundamental principle behind the astrolabe is geographic projection, which was first invented by Hipparchus in 125 BC. I have over here with me a spherical ball with some cutouts. Some of you might remember this as your favorite childhood toy, but did you ever wonder how we can take this 3D sphere and project it onto a two-dimensional surface. Well, this is possible through the process known as stereographic projection. So along here with the balls, I have here a torch with me, which I will use to present three different types of projections. The first type of projection is an orthographic projection, which is when the source of light is kept at an infinite distance away from the sphere. As you can see, the shadow is an orthographic projection. Now, take a look at this chart over here. The source of light is at an infinite distance away, and as it comes, the projection is made like this. Now, the second type of projection is a mnemonic projection, when the source of light is kept at the center of the sphere. The shadow that will be created from this is going to be a mnemonic projection. Now, as you can see in the chart, when the point of projection is at the center, this creates a projection like this. Now, the third type of projection is a stereographic projection, which is when the source of light is kept at one of the antipodes of the sphere. That is, at one of the poles of the sphere. As you can see, this shadow is a stereographic projection of this toy ball. Now take a look at the chart once again. As you can see, the point of projection is the antipode of the sphere, and this creates a projection like this. So, to better understand what stereographic projection is, Let's take a look at this second demonstration over here. Now this hemisphere, at the pole of this hemisphere, is a point. And let's imagine this to be a source of light. From this point, we have threads extending outwards, which are going to be rays of light. Now these threads um, intersect the hemisphere at two different small circles, like this. And then these threads extend outwards and intersect the plane to create two more sets of circles, these two. So now, what this is essentially showing you is how these two circles are a stereographic projection of the small circles on the hemisphere. Now to understand the mathematical principles that govern this transformation, take a look at these three sets of equations right over here. The first set of equation talks about the transformation of coordinates. That is, if you know the uh, coordinates of the projected circle, any point of the projected circle, you can then find out the point of the three-dimensional small circle of the hemisphere. And you can do the same vice versa. Now the second set of equation is uh, uh, the equations for a three-dimensional circle. So if you know the equation of this hemisphere, and if you know the equation of a plane that is passing through the hemisphere, like so, imagine this. So you can find out the equation of this small circle that is created uh, because of the intersection. And that is essentially what the second set of equation is doing. Now the third set of equation uh, allows us to know the equation of the projected circle once we figure out the equation of the small circle. So these three set of circles are uh, sort of the most important equations that we need to know when we're dealing with geographic projections. So now let's come back over here and take a look at the globe. This is our Earth and imagine the entire universe surrounding it. Our it contains our solar system, the stars, the sun, and all the planets. And so this is essentially the celestial sphere, like this. So this celestial sphere is, as you can see, a three-dimensional sphere. And if we take a projection of this entire celestial sphere and we geographically project it onto a plate, we will get what is known as an astrolabe. So now I will explain the various parts of an astrolabe. This is the front of the mantle and this is the back of the mantle. 
This is the alidade. It is used to measure the altitude of the sun. Now this transparent sheet over here is the reed. This is the rule. And over here is the plate. This bold line is the horizon. These green lines are the latitudes. And these red lines are the altitudes of the sun. Now this center, center is a circle, is the Tropic of Cancer. This is the equator. And this is the Tropic of Capricorn. So now I will, ex and I forgot to mention, this is the ecliptic, which is divided into the 12 zodiac signs. Now I will tell you how to measure, the, uh, how to determine the local time using the astrolabe. First, you have to keep the astrolabe at eye level. And then using the alidade, you have to measure the altitude of the sun, which is right now, let's suppose, 10 degrees. So now you will you uh, and now using the LED you also measure the degree you also measure the degree yeah, of the sun in the current constellation. So today's date is November twenty fifth, and then you can see that it is approximately in Sagar uh, it's approximately in Sagartis ten degree uh, ten degrees. So now you will move to the front. And then you will locate Sagartis 10 degrees uh, on the ecliptic. And then you will move it till it uh, reaches the 10 degree altitude uh, marked in red over here. So Sagartis 10 degrees is here. And then you will move it till it hits the 10 degree mark right here. And now you move the rule. And then you can see that it's approximately 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. It's approximately 4 p.m., 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So then this is only one use of the astrolabe to measure the local time. The other uses of the astrolabe include uh, telling the time of sunrise, telling the time of sunset, measuring the altitude of any building, etc.